My name is Dr. Eric Bender. I'm a psychiatrist and I specialize in child adolescent psychiatry, adult psychiatry, and forensic psychiatry. Thank you all for watching my videos on YouTube. I really appreciate the support and all the questions. I'm going to try to talk about some of the series and movies that you've asked me about, talking about mental health and how we see that depicted by the characters and also in the storyline. HBO's Succession tells the story of Logan Roy, this billionaire, it seems, whose companies are thriving or failing, and he's trying to figure out how to continue to make money. And those at his feet are his children, and Roman, Connor, Kendall, and Shiv. The four of them are vying for who's going to succeed father in the business once he dies, or once he's presumably by them not going to be involved in this business any longer. Baby, Kenny. What up, motherfuckers? Sorry I'm late. What are we arguing about? What I find most interesting about Succession is you have the relationship with your kids that you create. The relationship with his children is one where he does not seem to love them, nor do they necessarily feel loved by him. It's all about transactions. It's all about money. It's all about who's going to have the business and how do I position myself this way and how do I position myself this way. You bust them here, guns in hand, and now you find they've turned to fucking sausages. You talk about love? It's just all about things and material. There really isn't a display of love from the father to the children. Logan might argue that he does love his kids. He helps one of his sons clear up a drug issue and clear up the disappearance and death of someone during one of his drug binges. He would say he, are, he loves his kids because he helps them get connections and provides them with money. These are material things. Children at any age don't just want material things for the most part, especially when they're young. They just want to feel like they're loved by their parents, that they're important for who they are. These kids as adults now are trying to show their father why they're important, but why they're important enough to be considered the next person to succeed him and to be involved in the business. Each child seems to have something off with how they interact with the world. I'm still applying for the job of president of the United States. Do you think that that's like a natural progression from <laughs> never done nothing, never to the most important job in the world? Mm. Well, like, could you maybe get a little experience at like a CVS? Or, something? Yeah, or just like nickel hand jobs under a bridge. So Connor wants to become the next president of the United States, having zero experience in politics. He has this inflated view of himself, in some ways, a different form of narcissism than his father but feeling like he deserves this and he can do this. So he has these delusional ideas that he can be this person. Connor is constantly seeking the approval of his girlfriend, Willa, and actually asks her to marry him. Eventually she just says, okay, fine, let's get married. And he accepts that, he's excited to move forward. It shows such low self-confidence for Connor to want to be with his girlfriend when she accepts his proposal that way because who would want to be with somebody who's like, okay, yeah, I guess it's all right. But that's where he is. He doesn't have that confidence, yet he has these delusional ideas he's going to become president of the United States. What are we arguing about? What's wrong with him? Oh, where do we start? Ah, I'm off my nut, folks. Off my fucking oh my nut. Like all the papers said, your dreams have come true. Congratulations. Uh, hey, just so you know, I think things are good with the launch. I talk to the guy. He doesn't care, Rom. He doesn't even fucking notice. Dad, give him, give him a high five. Come on, he's waiting. Dad. Kendall has turned to drugs and alcohol. Sorry. What are you fucking for? Will you knock it off? I got I'm trying to drive the car and not have 
a wing boy in my fucking face. All right, that's enough. It's so painful as a child to not feel loved, to not feel like you are important to your parents or your caretakers. But you can escape that in different ways. He chooses drugs. Now, there's science, obviously, behind addiction. Not everybody who tries drugs becomes addicted. Kendall probably has some genetic component that makes it so he's more prone to addiction. But he does turn to drugs, and that's where he has gone for quite some time to feel better about his life, to feel like he's important. Siobhan has tried her best to accomplish and learn and feel like she can handle situations. And in fact, she counsels her father at times how to handle these dodgy things his company is being accused of. I've never run away from anything in my life. Can we just, just talk about the memo? Uh, I, I owe you a response. Oh, you've not, you've not read it? Siobhan, I have an entry the size of Argentina. Okay. He doesn't want to listen to her. That's probably a reflection of him not listening to her, not paying attention to her or any of his kids for years. And despite his not paying attention to her, she continues to want to try to get out of him what she can, which at this point is money. And it's some kind of power. And then finally, Roman. Now, if I were capable of any sudden movement, I would totally pounce on you right now. Should we get married? What? You know, not that, like uh, an equivalent of uh, a thing, like I abduct you and force you to live with me. Uh, that's not equivalent. Roman has this smart aleck attitude all the time, and he's involved in sexual escapades with an older woman on the staff. He turns to sex and joking and just doesn't really live in reality himself and just thinks only of himself, in some ways realizing no one else is going to think of him. So he's manipulative as well, trying to get what he can. I am surrounded by snakes and fucking morons! He did not fire me. He said it was just going to take a little longer. What's also interesting in this relationship with the father is the father realizes his kids are not competent. He doesn't trust any one of them to have this business. And why would he? They have not done much for themselves and they've lived on this family's name for so long. Come on, Dad, what are you gonna do with the five bill? Huh? Put it on your pile with all your other fucking bill? Mm-hmm, probably, yeah. And what are we supposed to do? Make your own fucking pile. It makes total sense that he wouldn't trust them, and in some ways, he's probably ashamed of them. None of the characters seem to be capable of truly sharing their emotions. If you look at Shiv's marriage with Tom. You told me you wanted an open relationship on our fucking wedding night. He's trying to talk about his fears of going to prison. He's trying to talk about having children. She just brushes it all off, doesn't care. Roman has these sexual relationships, but nothing really that's an investment in someone's emotional well-being or a partnership with somebody in a truly meaningful way. Kendall also was married and divorced, has a history of drug use. He's not really able to consistently have an emotionally meaningful relationship with people in his life either. I'll throw in a blow job. I'll throw in a reach around. Hell, I'll even uh, cup his balls. Yeah. He's trying, but he almost doesn't know how. He doesn't know how because it wasn't modeled for him. We've talked about Logan, but their mother also was not someone who was quite capable of being emotional. Me? Attention from you? Oh, no. That ship sailed long ago. Yeah, I might have been a bit of a spotty mother, but you've been a shitty daughter, so... What is an adult child going to do with that? Is the adult child supposed to apologize for being hard when she's 10? It just doesn't make any sense. So I think the mother was trying to say, well, there's a reason I did what I did. But then again, it's not about the child. It becomes about the mother and the mother's suffering with this child. There's no good that's going to come out of that. So there's no one to model how to actually go about having relationships with people that are meaningful. 
Other lessons that you can learn from succession about parenting include how not to parent. The main character, Logan's relationship with his kids, is all reflective of a type of parenting called snowplow parenting or bulldozer parenting. That's different than helicopter parenting. Helicopter parenting is the idea that a parent is always looking over the shoulder of the child, making sure things are okay. But snowplow parenting or bulldozer parenting is when you clear the path in front of the child and make sure there's no obstacles that they ever need to deal with. In some ways, that seems to be what these kids have had. They don't know how to deal with obstacles in their way. Kendall can't deal with things, nor can Connor, nor can Roman. This is all the result of never having to be challenged in this way. and The father just making sure things were okay. In a way, the father must be super ashamed of how his kids can't function, and that's one reason he doesn't have a clear successor here, that it's not clear who's going to take over. I have you beat, you morons. All of these kids are vying for their father's attention, or you might say love, but that attention and love comes in the form of money in the form of power. So that's really why they're after this. It's almost like a substitute for love is, okay, I'm okay in dad's eyes because I got this. But there's also the selfish side of each of them, wanting this for themselves, wanting this title, wanting this money, wanting whatever it is. Everything I've done, I've done for my children. Everything I've done in my life, I've done for my children. Logan himself likely has a narcissistic personality disorder. Someone with narcissistic personality disorder, also called a narcissist, is someone who feels that they deserve attention and care and praise and respect on the highest level. They might have delusional ideas that what they do is more important than everyone else. They have this idea, this ongoing pursuit of power or beauty, and could be in this case money. These are things that drive them, and in addition, some people, when it's called malignant narcissism or really severe narcissism, they lack empathy. They don't care about other people, and they don't care that what they do to get their goals, they don't care how that affects others. From a child's point of view, when a narcissist is involved, particularly a parent who's a narcissist, the parent takes up all the space. Kids figure out what their parents need them to do how they need to be in order to be praised by the parent. Otherwise, the parent can make the child feel inconsequential. Went over the line. Oh, I, I think it was pretty clear that I was oh, talking. No, no, it was clear, yeah. You tortured the old dinosaur. You barbecued him live, hmm? Don't hey, fuck with hey, me! Hey, hey, no! Don't hey, fucking hey, touch no. him! And so these children are vying to not feel that way in some way, even as adults here but his narcissism makes him emotionally unavailable. He just doesn't care really about his kids. He's had a divorce, at least one already. He's an angry person too. The actor who plays Logan was interviewed on NPR and talked about Logan is angry. So it was great to hear him say that. He's an angry person. He's angry in so many ways. And not only is he probably ashamed of his kids, he's probably angry at how his kids turned out, but he is at fault here too. And that he will never be able to see because he's a narcissist.